In our last episode, we brought a vintage classical guitar to expert luthier Mike Neshenbeni to see what's involved with installing a pickup and how much it would cost. Now we visit his shop to see the progress so far. Mike shares some challenges he ran into, a surprising discovery, and what needs to be done to finish the guitar. Okay, so this preamp unit, it's a great unit, um, but unfortunately they threw a very cheap plastic bezel, uh, bezel around it. Um, I actually asked Fishman if they, because I'm, I'm having a whole new unit sent. Mm -hmm. I asked if they make it with like metal mm -hmm. or something like that, but no. Turns out this becomes a little more malleable if you mm -hmm. soak it in boiling water. <clears throat> they don't recommend that a, a non-professional do that. Once it's installed, this, this flips up and you just pop the battery in there. It's all in one unit. Oh, so, so eventually it will look like that. I just got to get this frame to to mm -hmm. conform to the uh, the curve mm -hmm. of the guitar. It's a really cool kit. It it comes with these little these are magnetic uh, flexible little tabs to pin the wires mm -hmm. down so they're mm -hmm. not rattling around getting in the way. Okay. And then it's actually anchored in there. These things, all the tension, mm -hmm. whatever, is not going to be just screw to the mm -hmm. woods. So you don't have to worry about it. Like once I get it on there, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about it ripping away. Mm -hmm. It actually anchors into these little plastic things and, and holds in there really nice. When I had it in there the first time, it was, mm -hmm. it was a real nice fit. This wire here is going to the output jack, which I installed in the strap button. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. And then I just threw another matching Thank strap you. button yep. on the front, so that's good to go. I had asked a couple questions about where you wanted it, because sometimes with playing styles and the way you mm -hmm. want the strap to seat on your neck, some people like it back here. Mm -hmm. That's good there. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much standard. Yeah. First problem we ran into when trying to mount this here, I was drilling the pilot holes to mount this thing and the wood actually split there. You, you can't see it anymore, which is good. Um, yeah, Cause the crack the actually comes out about an inch and a half. Mm -hmm. And then I, I put like a buttress behind there to make sure that garbage doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. But, but I just wasn't happy. I've got some pictures, the original touch-up job mm -hmm. I did, and yeah. from from a distance of right. eight feet, it looked well, fine. The surface looks beautiful. But the um, surface of the guitar. Yeah, yeah, the soundboard <laughs> was that was a success. Everything else was a complete success except for this this whole thing. But it'll be, it'll be fine. I know what to do now. I actually sanded it all the way down to the mahogany. Um, judging by when this was made, it was probably old growth mahogany. Mm -hmm. So the tree that this wood came from was probably planted sometime in the late 19th century. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the wood was probably about 10 years old when the guitar was made. Mm -hmm. So chances are the wood the tree was felled probably before you were born mm -hmm. or right around the same time, which is cool, mm -hmm. but it also makes it a little brittle, but it's gorgeous. Supposedly it takes about 40 years for wood on a typical acoustic guitar to like fully mature. Mm -hmm. And this being 60 years old, I mean, the sound is just so mm -hmm. warm. It's really, really nice. Uh, another cool thing I discovered when I was sanding in here and everything with the real, real fine grit stuff is at first glance, this binding, this strip around here, it just looks black, especially up in the front. Now, I don't know if, if that's just grime that built up or whatever. If you look closely, it's actually a really cool tortoise shell. Oh, no, wow. no, this is this is roughed up again. This mm -hmm. is kind of like in the middle of things. But once I can sand this down real, real fine grit, and I actually got this. I, I have a picture mm -hmm. yeah, I'll forward this to you where <clears throat> this was all smoothed out and shiny, and this yeah. was this just looked great. It just mm -hmm. added a little bit to mm -hmm. to 
Because the age of the thing made it go black, huh? (laughs) I I guess, yeah. The surface looks beautiful. I hadn't seen it look like that, and it was all crapped. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of a problem area here. I'll see if I can... I I don't want to sand down through all the lacquer. It looks fine. It looks beautiful. Okay. And then another spot was... Yeah. With, with the pick, once once I got rid of all the crackle mess there, it is actually worn down. And this this is really common for old guitars. Mm-hmm. It's worn straight down to the mm-hmm. wood here. Yeah. So I do want to throw a little finish just mm-hmm. to protect it. Yeah. Because eventually, this this will just rot through, mm-hmm. and and that'll make this binding come loose yeah. and blah 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 blah. Yeah, and then we'll we'll mount the new one in there. And to do that right with waiting eight to ten hours between um, stain mm-hmm. and mixing, I got it real close here, but I can get it better. It's going to be a mix of uh, mm-hmm. colonial maple and walnut, mostly mm-hmm. walnut to keep it dark. This is just simple mm-hmm. sand, stain, clear mm-hmm. coat, yep. sand again, mm-hmm. buff, yep. nothing complicated, mm-hmm. and it's going to look fantastic. Thank you. I'm going to... Strip it down all the way around, do the back, mm-hmm. and it's it's gonna look. I'm gonna sound like Donald Thank Trump. You. It's yeah. gonna look amazing. Yeah, right.